In a previous lesson, we learned about the print function. The official Python documentation defines the print function like this. The print function will print objects to the text stream file, separated by sep and followed by end. Sep, end, file, and flush, if present, must be given as keyword arguments. Okay, so that sounds a little too complicated. There are a lot of components here that we really don't need to pay attention to because this is still a beginner level course. So let's simplify the definition and just say that the print function will display text on the screen. Now, the reason why I wanted to show you this complicated definition first is to show you that not all resources are ideal for beginners. And if you come across something that is difficult to understand, don't be discouraged. The reason why these things would be difficult for you to understand is precisely because you are just starting to learn about it. Experiencing some or even a lot of difficulties is definitely part of the learning process. If you have trouble understanding something, then just keep on looking for other resources or join some forums where you can ask questions. And through that process, not only will you learn more about Python, but also develop skills that will make you a better learner. But rest assured, for this course, we will try our best to simplify things and make them easier to understand. Okay, so going back to the print function, throughout the course, we will be using this a lot because when we create our programs, we'll want to be able to see the output of these programs. And the print function provides us with the simplest way to do that. If we are running Python code from a file, we'll need to use the print function in order to display the output. But remember, in interactive mode, that is not necessary. But here in the code editor, if I just type hello world, and then run the program, you'll see that nothing comes out in the shell. That's because all we did here was provide a value the Python interpreter actually ran the code. It's just that nothing in our code tells the computer to actually print the value. We have to be very specific when writing our computer programs. Just because we typed a value here, the computer is not going to assume that we actually want to print it out. In programming, we need to tell the computer exactly what to do. If we want to print something, then we tell the computer to print. To use the print function, we've learned that we type the word print followed by parentheses. And then inside the parentheses, we pass the value that we would like to print, such as hello world in this example. The type of this value is called a string. The reason why it's called a string is because string is another word for sequence. And what we have here is a sequence of individual characters that are tied together to form one whole value. In Python, as well as in other programming languages, strings are enclosed in quotation marks. But notice that when printed out here in the shell, the quotation marks are not included, which is to be expected. The opening and closing quotation marks are really not part of what gets displayed. Rather, they are used to mark the start and the end of the string. In a future lesson, we'll learn more about strings and we'll learn what to do if we want to actually display quotation marks in the string. Now, going back to this print function, we can refer to this statement as a function call. Specifically, it is a call to the print function. To call a function means to execute it. So when you call or execute a function, it tells the function to do whatever it's supposed to do. Python has a lot of other functions that you can use, and print is just one of them. By default, each print statement prints out a new line. So if I call the print function again, we'll see the values displayed here in separate lines. Hello world gets printed first because it's in line one, followed by how are you today in line two. 
So here we see that the interpreter executes the instructions starting from the top. You're not just limited to using strings with the print function. In these examples, we are printing out numbers. The first one is going to print out the integer 1. This next one prints out the number 3.14. This last one will print out the result of 3 plus 5. This is called an expression. Specifically, this one is an arithmetic expression. It is going to add 3 and 5, resulting in 8. So this print statement is going to print out 8. And here we see the output as described. It's important that we don't put these in quotation marks. This is literally going to print a 3 and then the plus sign and then a 5. Let's run this and we see the output as described. You might come across some examples where there is extra white space in the code. You'll see here in this example, the first one has all these unnecessary spaces. When it comes to function calls, you can put spaces around the parentheses. But while doing this will not give us an error, the second line shows the preferred style of writing this in Python. So this is what we will follow in this course, removing the spaces between the word print and the open parentheses more clearly depicts that this statement is one single unit. Okay, so at this point, we are going to end this lesson. Let's have a recap of the things that we've learned. To call a function means to execute the function and have it perform the task that it was designed to do. When the print function is called, it will display text on the screen. A string is a sequence of characters. Quotation marks are used to denote the start and the end of a string. The print function can also be provided with numbers and expressions. And that's it for this lesson. There's a lot more about the print function, strings, and expressions that have yet to be covered, and we will learn more about them in future lessons.